me and Ryan have been together a long time and we'd never really planned on having children. Ryan wanted to have children, I didn't. Ryan didn't want to get married, I did. But we finally decided to do both at once and it all happened really quickly. We were just looking forward to having another mini person around, another little us. And it came really quickly and he wasn't breathing when he was born. Um, they resuscitated him in the room next to my bed for 19 minutes um, with me screaming, what's going on, why isn't he crying? Because you see so many films with babies, they just come out and they just go Rah! But George didn't do that. And there was literally about 25 people in this little room at once. And then it started. Ruby Mo's my little girl, she's four years old. She's been through a lot as a child. She was born with this genetic condition, she's got chromosome abnormality, developmental delay and chronic lung disease. She's always smiling, she wakes up happy. I've noticed she's a mini version of me. Yeah, I'm a happy person, I'm a bubbly person, I'm a strong person, my mum is a strong person. When Ruby was in Great Ormond Street at five weeks old and she very first got ventilated, when I saw my family's faces and how sad they looked, I thought, I can't have that, because they're going to make me weak and I need to be strong for Ruby. I had to ban them from coming to see me. I blocked everyone out. A lot of his brain had lacked oxygen when he was born and they said that he had severe brain damage. They told us that he wouldn't make it through the year. So then we decided to start celebrating his birthdays monthly and Thank God for Haven House because we then transferred to Haven House as like a halfway house because there was so much to learn with George, the suction, the medicine, the feeding. Um, so we needed that extra help. It just felt like a second home. They took some bloods and we had to wait five months to get results and that was the worst time of my life. She just used to lay there with a blank expression. I didn't want to take her out, I was scared of her being out in the community. I was worried that people were going to stare at her because she was different. Is she going to survive? That's all I used to think every time she used to go in hospital. In my head, it was my responsibility to make sure he got out safe. That's why it's so difficult for me. And it depends on what's going on with George or life and how I emotionally deal with that. Sometimes, I can't emotionally deal with it. Other days, I think, no, I did try everything in my power to make sure that I delivered him as quickly as I could. I feel like I've been robbed. I feel like, what have I done to deserve this? I'm not a bad person. Why have I got a disabled child? And people say to me, she could have gone to a better person. But it doesn't make it easier. You still question, have I done something wrong? And do you feel guilty? You blame yourself for the way that your child is. I can't live my life wishing for something different, dreaming of what could have been because it won't make my life any easier. I've just got to think about my every day. I don't even plan for the future, just think about my every day. <laughs> That's enough. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, merry, 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 life is but a dream. It is a constant battle for every mum with a child with special needs. You have spent days when it's like never ending, constant appointments, 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 appointments. We're on a treadmill. Life is just a treadmill. We just go and go and go and go and go. Every now and then you fall off and you collapse because you think, okay, I need to stop. But then you pick yourself up, put on a fresh pair of trainers and on you jump again. In the colder months in that, I get down because when it's cold, I can't take Ruby anywhere. I'm on my own. And I did find myself really down and feeling really depressed for a good few, four or five months. And the Haven House noticed that I wasn't my usual bubbly self and pulled me up on it. And they said, you know, what's wrong, Kira? We have counselling here, we have support for you. You're getting support for Ruby, but who is supporting you? I think a lot of these parents just get on with it and I think they find their own ways of coping. But at some point, I think it, it's a bit like a pressure cooker, really. I think at some point you're, you're going to burst. 
I was offered the counselling at Haven House after just talking to one of the nurses and just saying that things were quite hard. I think you get into a, a pattern of life where you get through the day to day and I've not had time to actually think about myself. It was hard and I would cry but I enjoyed the release that I felt afterwards. It made me feel lighter. I'd come out of there feeling a little bit lighter. I do think that it does seem to be the mums that they become a carer for their child as well. And they do kind of keep that family unit together and it's hard work. And if they're able just to recognise that, it usually helps build the foundations back up as a family. I've started having counselling and it's made me feel better and I've slowed down a bit and I'm not beating myself up all the time about not doing things with Ruby because she's a happy little girl and she's getting all the, everything she needs and more but I've started to look after myself a bit more now. It's a grieving process right from the word go when you've got that diagnosis that your child is, is not going to be healthy and you're also grieving for the child that you didn't have because all your hopes and dreams of seeing your child grow up, go to school, to have friends to go and get married, to have grandchildren, you know, that's, that's all kind of stripped away and you're then becoming a sole carer for this child. I will come to terms with my life because I know that I have to, I know that I have responsibilities and I'll, I know that I have people around me to catch me if I fall but ultimately it has to come from me. You have to find a place within you with all those emotions, with all those anxieties, that it's, it's in there, it doesn't go, but you have to find a way of living with that. And that's kind of what we do. Um, yeah, rah. Yeah, me and Kieran have bumped into each other a few times at, the, at Haven House where she's been arriving for yoga and I've been leaving for counselling or music therapy and she's the one person that I can call or text and she won't sugarcoat the situation. She knows exactly how I'm feeling and she knows exactly what to say. I'll try and support Jade by giving her a bit of advice when and where she needs it and she's always there if I need her. It is reassuring for me to know that the phases of my life are such that I will one day be in the situation that Kim is in. And I think that motivates me to think, just plough on, just plough on. George is not even free yet. Ruby started smiling at seven months and that smile is what gets me through the day. It lights me up, you know? It warms my heart seeing that. And I want George a smile, that'll be lovely for her. Me and Ryan will literally burst when we can go, yes, that's a proper smile. <laughs> I guess my hopes would be that they can carry on living and to be happy. Some of them stop living. They, they literally stop living. George has been through so much for such a little tiny human being. He's been through more than most people go through in 10 lifetimes. We should be proud of him and we should say, actually, well done. You fought and you fought and you fought and you deserve to be celebrated. You deserve to be given a round of applause and I don't want people to feel sorry for us. I want people to be proud of George. I want them to be elated that, yeah, the doctor said he wouldn't leave, but he's still here. And every single day he does the smallest little thing that he didn't do the day Whoa. before. We call them inch stones rather than milestones. That deserves to be celebrated. Yeah, these children are heroes. I feel like if Haven House wasn't here supporting me and Ruby, I don't know where we'd be. I don't know what sort of life we have. I don't know if I'd be the person I am. And by having that lifeline, that's what it feels like, having that lifeline. It makes my world that little bit easier to deal with. They don't just provide care for the child. They provide services that incorporate the parents into the situation. So it does change your whole mindset. You can come out of that place feeling like relaxed and comfortable in your situation. Just by being here this evening, you've made more of a difference than you think. And I'm just 
so pleased to help Haven House and I just hope that you all tonight will help Haven House as much as you can too. Without Haven House I don't know where our family would be and it's not even just me and Ryan, it's my mum, my sister, they've supported all of us as a family. It would be amazing to give other families the opportunity to experience what we've experienced. They made us feel whole again.